Hello there, this is Patricia from Pinky's World and today my project is these cute wee boxes to hold some nice um, body lotions. But you could put anything you wanted in there. It's a good wee box. It's about two and a half by two and a half square. So, and it's it's a good wee bit of depth too. So inside, I will open one up and show you. Um, this one was made out of scraps, so I could work out my measurements and whatever. Um, these ones are of the new papers. Um, the lovely. These are free papers, free papers during celebration. So make sure and pick them up if you're having a wee shop. You can get them when you spend £45 or more. And they're called Dainty Flowers. There's actually a whole suite that goes with this. So it ties in with them, I think. There's lovely um, dies and stamps that I haven't got it. I just got the papers when I was doing a bit of early shopping. And they are beautiful. There's some gorgeous papers inside. There's lovely like watercolored. You've seen a few projects using that one. Um, and I'm going to make them lovely sympathy cards and stuff with this because it's really, really nice. There's a one with a wreath inside it. Like, beautiful, isn't it? You know, just put a, cut that out, stamp a sentiment in the centre and you have a card ready to go. Beautiful colours. Darks and lights. And remember when you get your pack that it tells you on the back all the different card that matches it. So you'll know to tie it in with it. I am actually going with black. I love the way the black has stood out in these. And um, I've used my own black ribbon. Unfortunately, um, Stampin' Up! don't have black ribbon at the minute, which is a shame. This is from the lovely Flowers and Leaves Punch. Um, it was a bundle, but now it's just you buy them separate. So I've cut a bit of, punched a half inch circle for the centre of the flower punched out the small flower in the black and just stamped hello from Forever Fern set, which is lovely too. So, but use any stamps you have, you know. Uh, these, the insides I got from, um, I think it was about, I don't know, I've been in that many shops this past uh, week from after Christmas, picking up wee bits and pieces that I'll uh, use for my crafts. And inside, it's lovely, it's just... Um, a garden party body butter and it was lovely they came in a set of three so we have an orange one and that one I have this one here which is so wonderful it says next we sends on them but that's what i've put inside and as you can see the lovely papers i made them to match this particular color so this time i'm going with uh the petal pink i think it is shades but i'm still using the black and i'll show you how to do all this it's so easy and it's great for using up any designer papers that you might have. And it's all just held together with a lid. I didn't make the lid really deep because I want to show off the lovely papers for a start. There's no point in putting nice papers on and then covering it up with a big giant lid. So I just did the lid half an inch deep. And then just a bit of black ribbon just to tie in with the basic black card. And there you have a nice wee gift to go. So, I need to trim my ribbon. So, there you are. Let's get to it. Where shall I put these out of the way? Right. So, we're going with this one this time. And I have gone ahead and cut all my DSP. And if you get your sheet of 12 by 12 paper, you'll be able to cut two strips and chop them into the sizes that you need. So, you need 10 of the patterned one. And then you need one of the same size, and these measure 2 and 3 eighths by 2 and 3 eighths. But you need one in the different paper. And on, on this particular one, it's just a flip. So that was easy enough. And the other ones I had to cut into another page of the same papers. And then you need two smaller ones for the wee triangles. And you need those to measure 2 and a quarter by 2 and a quarter. I will have all these measurements down on my blog if you want to have a go. I made it this particular size. There's lots of these tutorials out there, but... I always take something and make my own so that I can do my own measurements more or less. It's nothing new, but it's how I do it myself. So, first of all, you need, for your base, you need a piece of card, um, 7.5 inches by 7.5 inches. And then, I'll show you this one. I'm going to use this to cut my lid when we get that far. Um, well, we'll just cut it now we'll, when I have it here. So... That's for your base. For your lid, you're going to need a piece that is three and a half by three and a half, but you're going to add on an extra one sixteenth of an inch. 
so that it fits on nicely and you're not squishing it you know so bring your card over to two and a half and then you can't really see a little shiny light there two and a half i'm sure you know how to do this but i'm going to zoom in and show you there that's as good as it gets right go to your two and a half inch mark which is here and then there's one wee notch there um just go up to it just one notch over the two and a half mark one wee notch when you're following the inches not the centimeters follow the inches and just go two and a half and one wee notch simple as that and cut your piece and do, turn it round and do the same two and a half <gasps> three and a half what am i doing oh three that's gonna say it's a small lid three and a half <laughs> and one wee notch three and a half and one notch flip me pink that was lucky it wasn't the last piece of card wasn't it <laughs> three and a half and one wee notch just as simple as that and that gives you that nice wee piece that you need and you get rid of all those so now we we'll want to do a bit of scoring and a better zoom out before i give you the head stickers Oh, I've lost all my good light there. It's going crazy now, isn't it? I'm going to try and focus in again and fix it. Hopefully that will stay. I don't know what's going on with the light tonight. I hate doing these at night time and you always end up doing them at night time. Right, get your scoreboard out. And we're going to score the seven and a half inch square piece at um where am I going? Two and a half inches. Because that is the size of my box. So two and a half, flip it round and just do two and a half on all four sides. And while we're here, we're going to do the point to point scoring. So I have a line down my um, scoreboard and I'm going to line this point up at the six inch mark and this one down here I need to move out a bit for you again just ignore the mess any mess you'll see okay so this point here and then we're going to go down right down to the bottom point so that's all lined up on the line say right down to there but just make sure if you run a colored marker down that or a white chalk marker whatever you have that'll keep you straight but you're not going into this you're going to the points so from here down to here and from here down to here spin it round and do the same here line it up at the six inch mark go down to the point that it goes to your nice bit of coloring that you've done and just go up go down so that you're left with this that's what you want to see and for your wee lid i'm going to normally it go to the edge pull it in a wee bit but it's, it's easy to not get the right um pull out each time so i advise you to go to the inch and you'll see the gap where you normally if you're were lined up at your inch you'd normally go down and you'd catch your paper Go across to the right hand side of that groove so that you're missing it. The groove is completely clear and that's where you want to line up and just score at half an inch. Spin it around, line it up again just to the right of the groove at the inch and go to half an inch. And just repeat that the whole way around. Keep to the right of the groove so that you're not seeing any of the groove at all. Or sorry, you are seeing the groove. You're not seeing any of the next line. Line it up and go to your half inch. And again, to the right of the groove. So that you can see that canal down there where your, your total would normally go. See what I mean? And that keeps you hopefully right. So now we need to do a bit of burnishing and cutting so we're going to go back into our big piece again 
and we're going to go um, to each square that has this and we're going to go cut it from there down to here so I find this we cutter suits me best the guillotine one so I'm going to line it up at that point and line this one up perfectly and just chop that off and you're left with that nice shape so you want to repeat that on each corner corner to corner and chop it off if you're very thrifty you could do something with your pieces so that gives you that nice like hexagon hexagon shape you call it i'm not sure so next we'll want to do our um bits of scorn our burnishing so burnish all the long lines on doing each side I'm not going to do the wee uh, folds here yet until I put my paper on. So we want to decorate it. So get your papers that you've chopped up. So you need those two are for your triangles, the two pieces that are in the pink, and you want them to be two and a quarter by two and a quarter. So just a nice wee square. These ones you're going to pop inside and they were two or three and sorry two and three eighths by um, two and three eighths obviously. So they're going to sit here. So you need to decide when I was doing it I made the, the flowers go all into the inside the whole way around. So decide yourself when you're doing it and stick those in place. So you're going to need for them one. Whoops, whoops, <laughs> two, three, and four. And I'm just facing that, looks upside down to me, but that's the way it's going to sit nicely. So I'm going to stick those in place, and we have one that I cut as well, the same size, only in the pink, and I want it in the centre so that it, it matches my wee a container perfectly so I'm going to stick those in place and come straight back to you so that's them all stuck in place and um, we we'll need to do our wee triangles now for the other set of the triangular pieces and what you need to do is get the ones that you cut at two and a quarter by two and a quarter and we're going to line them up corner to corner oh dude and cut them in half. And that's the middle of that one. So just slide it in your cotton from there to there. And then I find my other cutter is better for cutting it again for the next stage. Just sorry about the light. But slide that up to the very top so it's butted right up there. And then line this point up with your gutter here so that that keeps you nice and don't try and cut from the point cut from the widest part up otherwise you'll shred your paper so try and keep those two together that you've cut you know they match and just do that so that you end up with four nice pieces just line it up so that, that point is nicely secured there Keep those two together they tend to match a bit better if you do that i would really need to clean this cutter and one more it just makes it so much easier to be able to line that up nicely without having to panic about things so now you want to take your piece and we're just going to like use one set of triangles and just pop them in so one goes there and one goes there and we're just going to do it the whole way around stick them in place now that's it all decorated on the inside at this stage if you wanted to do any stamping or any extra things you can plug things here or whatever 
but I think it's just nice enough on its own. Whenever this is sitting inside, it's just going to sit up nice. So now you want to squeeze these together. So when that comes up, these are going to squeeze in like that. And you could take your um, bone folder and give it a wee. Make sure your, your glue's dry before you do this, of course. So just make sure they're sitting nice and neat. Give it a wee squish. Same with the other side. A wee tiny squish. That one's definitely not dry. And your final one. So you can see it just forms your, whoops, your wee container. These will just sit neatly in out of your way. So now you want to decorate the outside of it before you do your lid. And the outside's going to be sitting like so. So you want your, your paper running the right direction. If it is a directional paper, make sure that you have the flowers running the right way up. So we know that's right. So we'll turn it over and stick these all in place. I didn't cut anything for here. I don't see the point of it when it's folded in. You're not going to see it. So you really just need all your things running this way this time. So that you're not um, running them into the center. So just make sure you put them on the right way. I also didn't uh, decorate the bottom. Again, there's no point. It's going to be sitting up. So that's all that you put on that. So I'm going to go ahead and glue these in place. So that's that all stuck in place. So we have that ready to go. And we're just going to leave it to that glue dries a bit. And we'll work on our lid. So this is your lid. And you want to get your scissors and go to the points here. Cut up to that line. And then go over there. And chop away a wee bit. You could uh, trim out a wee bit of that bulk there if you want. But it should be okay. So you want to do that four times. Just turn it clockwise. Cut up the strip. Chop off a wee bit and trim it there. And just keep repeating that round on all four corners. And that is that sorted. I could actually stick our paper in. So be sure and set your, your paper to fit. Um, if it's facing this way, then you know that's going to be the front of your box. You know, so to, I'll show you when we're doing it. So we'll just stick a bit of glue on that. I have a bit the same size that I'm going to pop in this middle. I might actually go with a pink this time on the inside. Just to reflect the pink on the other, the bottom part. But this, you could just use the same paper for the whole thing. It doesn't need to be mix and match, you know. But if you have double sided paper, why not show it both sides off? And this paper is it has a lovely wee like vintage feel of the lovely and I think I'll make a couple of notebooks out of it, which would be really pretty. So okay, that is our lid more or less done. So you want to take these and hope that your paper doesn't slip. Give them a wee burnish. On all four sides. Including your wee tabs. And then we're going to get a bit of glue. So I'm going to use the heavier glue, the tomboy glue, just to give it a good firm closure. Just put a wee bit on each flap. This is the inside of your box, so the flaps are facing in that way. And 
and then just fill them up and form a nice corner nice and neat a good big grip and just repeat that the whole way around Just so it's all nicely squared up. All right, so I'm going to pop our wee data in there, whatever you're doing. As I say, well, let's fold it up. You could fit chocolates, candles, anything you can think of that'll fit in there. It's good two and a half inches by two and a half inches by two. Two and a half, is it? It should be two and a half deep, shouldn't it? Yep, two and a half deep. So you can fit a right wee bit in there. And now you get your lid. And remember to check which way you're facing, which one's going to be your front. Pop that lid on and that holds it all nice and secure. And then we're just going to tie it round with a bit of ribbon. And say I'm using this black organza ribbon. And it's just tie it one part around the front. I don't really want to bandage it up with four like a parcel you know so just make sure you have enough to tear out And then just cut your tails. So that was that. We just need to do our sentiment now. And as I say, I'm going to use the word hello. Black ink to tie in with that. And just a wee bit of um, a wee scrap. See if you've got a smaller scrap even. What's that smaller? Slightly smaller. And slightly. I think I'll go... What size did I do? Yeah, that one there will do all right. Always keep your wee off cuts. They're great for sentiments. So, we're going to ink it up with memento. Just black memento. And I thought hello was dead on for using. Um, so it covers all bases, doesn't it? You know, it doesn't have to be birthday or anything. and just be a wee gift for somebody that you're thinking of. I'm going to chop it off about here so that I can do a wee tail. So I'm just cutting up to the centre just before the O, turning it, clipping it off, clipping it off. So at this stage, um, because I'm not backing it onto more black, I wanted to make it stand out a wee bit. So I'm just doing some faux lines, faux stitching. Same at the bottom. This doesn't need to be any particular length. Just stamp it, give yourself room to cut tails and give yourself room here to add your wee flower. Just turn that and do some tails that way. For some stitching I mean. And you can put some at the end even if you cut them off. What else? So you want to punch your wee flower out and um, that's just being punched out as I say by this flowers and leaves punch still available not as a bundle but it's certainly there and it goes with the what do you go with yeah that one there. this one here so if you had both you'd be able to punch these wee flowers out uh, you can see some of them there so a handy set that's called flowers of friendship so get your punch, get yourself a bit of uh, black yarn, just a scrap. That's all you need is a wee scrap. Slide it in down to the bottom. Get rid of the stuff you don't need. So with this, I'm just going to curl it up slightly. Just give it a wee curl. Just scooping it under there. And then we're going to bend it up. Curl back and then bend up. And then we're going to 
add a wee flat. This is a very half a millimeter um, square just to raise it slightly off this and then turn it so your leaves are not blocking it but showing it. And then you need something for the center so I suggest getting a piece of the matching paper and I have a scrap out. So we want to go with the pink so I'm just going to use the wee half inch punch Oh, that just went flying somewhere across the floor. Not much good. So get yourself a wee bit of heavy foam. I keep a wee quarter for doing a wee bit of this. And your big ball too. And just go round. Do you turn it into a curved, like card candy nearly? And you want to add a deeper dimensional to that. You can nearly add two, but I'm going to go with one. And we'll stick it to our wee flower. And then that keeps it all toning in nicely. And then you need some bigger dimensionals again. We're really building this baby up. So you just want to pop it on there and pop a smaller piece on there. And then we're going to stick it in place and we're all done. Great project for using up some um, older papers, some scraps or whatever. Or for your free papers, of course. So the bow's here. Everything's facing this way. So this is going to be your front. So I'm just putting that at a wee jaunty angle. And that is me all done. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you'll give it a wee go. And I'll say... If you do crafters or anything, look out in the likes of Boots and other wee local chemists and stuff and you'll get these lovely wee packets left over from Christmas and they're still fine for the rest of the year, you know. So you can package them up and make some nice wee treat boxes. So thanks very much for uh, watching and remember to subscribe if you haven't already. I really appreciate it and I'll catch you all again next week. Bye.